Season one, episode three. Let's do it. And or season one, episode three. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, this scene. This scene, this is Cassian as a kid, right? And and like he's got his his um blow dart, his dart gun, with filled with poison, probably, hopefully. And then he goes down and like and like pokes this woman here, but like he pokes her in the stomach. And hey, whenever you want to see if something's alive, don't poke in the stomach, because it can still fake that. Like a possum or whatever. Like, no, 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 you gotta poke it in the eye. Poke in the eye with what appears to be your bong. Hmm. And I've heard the sternum thing where you go on somebody's sternum and you go back and forth with your fist. Somebody is cannot not react to that if they are conscious. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that I learned different ways to check if someone's dead. Yeah. <laughs> or just shoot them and then they're dead. Find out later. Oh, yeah, Put your hands up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why Why did you shoot first and then tell them to put their hands up? I also liked in this scene that he had the blow gun, dart gun, at the ready. At the like ready. That's how you would be at the ready. Right. Um, you got one shot. If you were it. entering yeah, a place. Good, uh, good procedures, young Cassian. This guy's a hunter. He's ready. Ready for the fight. What about this woman here? She's yellow. Is the yellowing for the for the people who in, in the crash ship, is that because they're on the toxic planet and it gives them some kind of jaundice thing? Is that right? I have no idea. So it could be that these people have some type of poison, so some type of infection that they're bringing to the planet. Like it's maybe it's maybe it's after this Ooh. that it's it's ruled as inhospitable. Then again, I saw the sh- we saw the stripped out mines and the, their mm-hmm. people are gone. So that suggests that it was already abandoned, which means mm-hmm. maybe Cassian has some type of immunity developed when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's possible. But then later in the episode, the, uh, the old woman and her partner come on the ship and they're unaffected. It seems like the crew was rapidly affected by this toxicity or something, but then others around them are not. It's interesting. I'm therefore guessing that this is some accident that happened in space. That could be. So it's actually maybe toxicity from the ship itself or something happened in space that caused them to die but has nothing to do with the planet. Could be. That's my guess. Yep. We still ha- it still hasn't been explained. It may never be. And here's the poke. Poke. Right. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you're very right. This poke right there, if she were still alive and was faking it, she could easily fake that. She like, just Meh. doesn't move. Yep. Just, eh. I guess if you poked hard enough, you're like, huh. <laughs> wait, That's wait, right. but then the, even the body, like, it would be like, huh. <laughs> right. right the body squeeze the, air I'm, out of bodies. <laughs> yeah. A natural dead body would react to that in a way that would be similar to a live body if they were faking it. So, you're poking the ice. Not a good test. Yeah, poking, poking the, the ice. ice. Blow a huge smoke, a huge cloud of smoke, and just like, oh, yeah, smoke it. I was looking when I was watching this. I looked at this, uh, like this station right here. That station right there. You've got this screen and this control panel. If you're manning the station, you're standing there all day. Huh. That's kind of annoying. And then look at these screens like here. Oh, they don't get like here. a seat or whatever. Oh man, this is just like in the in the Death Star where like there are people standing at railing without railings all day. Without yeah, that's right. I mean, I mean, look at this. Look at this like down here. Uh huh. This 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 uh when it comes to the wall, the paneling is jutting into the area. So not Mm -hmm. only if you wanted to look at this particular screen right there, not only can you not stand near it, you have to like stand far back and lean Lean in forward. And all that exposed components there, like you can't have a drink and you don't spill something into that. Not good. This would be a very uncomfortable room. And it would be very difficult to read the panels because they're just so ergonomically inconvenient that this could cause problems. You have to like read them with a camera on your stomach. (laughs) <laughs> they're like they're just they're not pointing at the right places 
<laughs> Maybe that's it's like in Game of Thrones with the 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 chair. Like, don't be comfortable if you're sitting in it. With the Empire, don't be comfortable if you're working for us because you could be killed. Yeah, be alert at all times. At, at all times. Lower back problems. We don't care. Be alert. Lower back problems better than everyone on the ship dead. But if the lower back problems are causing a distraction, uh, so you're not performing at your best, that's your fault. We're killing you. Yep. Yep. Got to work on that core all the time. Uh, so I think the first thing I asked about this particular pick was, what is the, what do they do in this town where Cassian is living? Is this ship salvage? I think this is ship salvage. This, the ship lands down and they take it apart Get all the they get all the scrap metal and all the components, oh, and sell them. That's what I interpreted this as. So it's like a junkyard planet, and then they take stuff apart. Yeah, but later in the episode, there's also like salt of ev- evaporation ponds. We see. We also see merchants. I mean, it's got a pretty diversified economy. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of a very interesting place. That seems like it's got its shit together. They ain't no one-trick pony. They got a bunch of industry and supporting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just noticing this now. Look at look at this um, look at this scaffolding up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right there. Um, they've like erected scaffolding to (coughs) properly salvage the ship. They're not just taking it apart like, whatever. They're actually systematic about it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Still scary as fuck. <laughs> Wait, scary? Why scary? I think so. I mean, it's kind of precarious. Yeah, yeah. So like, like this, this panel like falls to the ground, and it's I don't know however many tons, and there's guys working on the scaffolding right next to it. Like, let me get down before we pull down this wall. Like, hang on. Wait, where, where are you? Where are you pointing to? I am right here. Right. Like there's see. this entire thing falling down and these little dudes standing right there like oof well it depends on what their procedures if they cleared the area and then and then lowered it into mm-hmm. place and then then they're up on the scaffolding scavenging if something else needs big needs to be moved they all they all come off the wreckage and and make the big change and then they go back on if they have good procedures yeah. i could see this working so this big change happened while they're still on there that's a scary thing. Like oh, a did. whole bunch of oh, oh yeah, this thing is like actively falling right now, and there, oh, there's geez. guys standing on the scaffolding. Like, what right. if this is enough mass change to unbalance the thing? The whole thing could tip the other way. I don't know. Yeah, actually, can we see that? Let's let's take a look in the. Uh... I want to see. I want to see this. Yeah. Here we go. Oh yeah. So he's like, my own face. I hate it. I am a <laughs> cat. <laughs> oh, get the safety, the safety. Yeah. Ah! Look, they're just right there. Like, so let them actively... come down first. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's that's a big so move. much mass. Also, an enormous statement. An enormous statement for like the engineering of that. That thing fell and it didn't crumble at all. It felt like mm-hmm. a complete just solid bl- slab. Yeah. Man, they should clear the wreckage of all personnel and then lower it. Don't let it fall. Oh shit, we'll have if... a field day fucking people up yeah well i mean this uh this government seems to be very well run so they should have problems with with the way they're doing this salvage because if there was any kind of snag anywhere and it pulled the wreckage over or something those guys who are working on that scaffolding are going to get pulled and, and die they're getting it's launched no and they could fall on sharp stuff they could fall under stuff like mm, yeah mm, mm. they know better mm. i didn't <laughs> If we go go to the next pick on, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking at this this crane here. I guess this aerial crane, which is like lifting up these large pieces. Um, here, like, so. So this is the crane. I oh yeah, yeah, like the this hover part. crane. That's called. Yeah, and it's lifting up this to these this thing. Mm-hmm. I had a problem with the hover crane's thrust here. Is shooting down onto the work site. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like people are like, bring it down, bring it down. And there's just like wind throwing in their wind. eyes. And like, <laughs> yeah. This hot thrust down injuring people. It's a hot thrust. Oh, I'm gonna call I'm gonna start a 
club called Hot Thrust. <laughs> It'll be a dance club. <laughs> oh. I also, like, I assume it's Star Trek technology. Not Star Trek. Ooh. Star Wars technology. Ooh, boy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where the center of mass is somewhere here. Yeah. So we've got this torquey business where... Um, oh, man. You know, this thing's going to rotate. Yeah. This thing should just be flipping. But maybe it's Star Wars tech, so they only need downward thrust and they can take care of the torque with some kind of sci-fi tech. Some type of be. force adjuster. Mm-hmm. But then if they can do that, if they can do that force adjustment, why not use that same force adjustment with the thrusters to eliminate the danger of downwash? Maybe the the hover crane just doesn't have enough midichlorians. So the the right side in this picture of the crane is being lef- levitated by the force, but there's insufficient metachlorians, so the left side needs additional thrusters. So it seems. Wouldn't it be wild if like the Star Wars technology at the core has like everything has an animal spirit that like we've harvested? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's some dark side shit. Which means that this crane is now a slave. Yeah, it's like a bantha inside of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I wish we'd have a field day with this stuff. I think like you get this section here disconnecting and this guy is just standing right there. Like he could eat, even even just the wind pulling from this this object falling away, like that would cause a suction on it. This dude could get pulled down. Yeah. But, but and, and, and these guys, these guys on the, on the hover crane, they are completely not connected at all. Like they're just standing on it while this thing accelerates and decelerates. And yep. like terrifying. But but it's all good because thumbs up. <laughs> like, 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 yo, should mm-hmm. we sh- should we be doing this? Like, yeah, it's good. Thumbs up. Oh, I see. Oh, they're not even. Yeah, they're not even tied down to the thing they're moving. Well, I mean, it's not a bondage. Yeah, yeah, but they're not like harnessed in. <laughs> right. So if there was an unexpected movement of the crane or who knows what, you know, movement of mass, they're just going to get flung from this. And die. I mean, they're 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 hanging on a pendulum. <laughs> it's yeah. not it's not even a rigid part of the of the hover crane. It's like they're fully just swinging in the wind. And you hope the pilot of the hover crane knows how to like dampen motion well, because it's got you've got this mass hanging down here, and you got the crane, and it's going to be swinging. So it's going to take a lot of skill to make sure that that thing doesn't you know you don't crash. Then you have to keep in keep in mind that. Accelerations on the bottom can't be high either, because there's guys on it. The guys, they're just using the friction of their feet. To <sighs> stay on the ground, stay on this floaty boy. So they've real. There must be the number of worker deaths in this uh, salvage junkyard. It must be huge, huge. But these guys are the best. That's why they survive. <laughs> hey. <laughs> or just the management doesn't care. They're just cycling the next guy. Oh. But this is a high-skilled job. Like, you can't just hire a dude off the street to do salvage. Like, you need to recognize hey. parts. You need to be able to dismantle them. Oh. You know, there's all kinds of skill with it. And if you're losing workers left and right, they hey. can't help the bottom line. Oh. What? <laughs> I'm just doing, do- I'm doing fun stuff. Hey. Oh. He <laughs> just is back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. The bottom line is make money. I'm a manager. No, no, that's too much rant. <laughs> yeah, this no, thing's I'm, terrifying. Was, it is not yeah. even like if it was one chain, at least that one chain could keep tension all the time. But these four chains, like they're mm-hmm. going to be loaded at different amounts. You could very mm-hmm. easily overload one chain. And now you got a hanging mm-hmm. thing with center of mass inconsistent. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and in addition, if you look at this picture. Actually, why don't they just um, get inside? Why not? That's true. That's true. If you look at this picture right here, just in case it wasn't unsafe enough. Wait a second. Dangly ropey bits that are going to like drag on the floor when you get low enough. That's right. I was I was drawing on the wrong one. These dangly boys. Dangly boys. Cables. Little, little <laughs> snag devices just so snag all devices. things can go to shit real fast. Mm-hmm. Just, just in case it wasn't unsafe enough, let's make sure there's a snag device. You know, if something can snag, it will snag. That's right. Like even even these guys right there, just hanging down down on the edge. God damn it! 
<laughs> I, drew, I drew on the one that you were trying. Yeah, Even these guys, these hanging guys right there. Like I get the ones that are hanging off the bottom. Like maybe when the when this piece of scrap hits the ground, those things are on the ground fine. But the unexpected ones. What do, what is circled there? I don't even that's see it. Trip. All those little cables there. That's that's a much shorter cable. That's less much less dangerous than the the, the huge dangly boys. Oh, so it's less dangerous. We shouldn't worry about it. Sure, I just no, care no. about workers. I'm just saying, not worry about. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, blue collar. <laughs> yeah, that's my yeah family. Okay. <laughs> because see how you instantly ha- became management, and you're like, these aren't a problem. No, 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 no. I said the 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 dangling pieces that are like twenty feet below the piece oh, those are more are higher priority than the ones that are not so dangly. I just want to keep my guys alive. Just because, <laughs> wait. So I was I was prioritizing the dangers, mm-hmm. and I said this is this is a high priority, and that one's a lower priority. I, and yeah, you interpreted low equal. priority as not a problem. They're all equally priority to me because I want to keep my guys safe. These are my guys. They've been working for me a long time. Yeah, I raised yeah. them myself. So, yeah, those those unsafe piece, those unsafe dangly cables are priority one, just like everything else. <laughs> yeah urgent see my email it says urgent everything's urgent, urgent. everything's urgent yeah oh uh, you go uh, oh so i was gonna so this uh just drawing on this here I'm messing this up. was pretty awesome yes there was this little robot that like robot little steps on top that got right into position for unloading the passengers of the bus i was also gonna say this guy is sort of some kind of ground traffic control to make sure the bus lands properly aligned and safely mm-hmm. super well run yeah in contrast to the junkyard yeah like and the floor is relatively clean so that way the the bus doesn't tip on anything like mm-hmm. this is a nice transportation center yeah absolutely i do have to say though i do have to say though that this little robot stairs that used to be someone's job and automation is taken that away. Now there's a little robot that has no other purpose in life but to move stairs. Like imagine, imagine being this dog. God, imagine being this. <laughs> I just personified. I personified this as a stair dog. Imagine this robot, this uh, this stairs bot, and it's like, what is my purpose? And it's like, your purpose is to be stairs. What? Exactly. Wait, what? Where is that? Oh, what's uh, the problem? I, I looked at the wrong one. No, okay, okay, right. I set that up again. Yeah, this little robot stairs, the stairs robot, super cool, super convenient. And like it handles itself, it rolls right up to the bus, that way you can step down. But that used to be someone's job. And automation has taken that away. Not only that, but like, what is this bot's life? This bot's life is just to be stairs. It's like, like, imagine if it was sentient one day and it's just like, what is my purpose in life? And it's like, your purpose is to be stairs. That's very uh, true. Is that bad? Oh, so, so this is, um, a Rick and Morty reference. Yeah. And so this guy is butter robot. Do you want to see the video? Bring it up. It. Short clip. What is my purpose? Pass the butter. Thank you. Dad, I need a ride to work. Maybe Rick can give you a ride. I'm helping Morty with science. I'm busy. Doing what? Uh, anything else? What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. <laughs> so instead of butter, it's stairs. Yeah. What is my purpose? People step on you. <sighs> Life, right? What is what is everyone's purpose to get stepped on? <laughs> oh no. Spicy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you or me. Speaking of stepping on people, here's the corporate people. Oof. Here to step on the little man for little having man. a murderer that's running around. 
I mean, it was self-defense. Let's be real. It's always self-defense, no matter what. No matter what. If I don't get caught, I didn't do it. If I do get caught, it was self-defense. Okay, so the, these next pictures, I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about there are three drop shits that come out, but we... Mm -hmm. People on the ground behave as if there's only one. Like, they're like, get into the boat, get that ship in the air, and then it crashes, but there's only one. Like, do you have other ships to get in the air? Like, Wait, I don't understand the... What do you mean? So, the... After after the dude kills the Bix's boyfriend, they're mm -hmm. like, get the boat into the air. We need eyes in the air. And then like one one ship goes up and crashes. Mm -hmm. And then but they have two other ships. Like mm -hmm. I guess it's it's okay. It's just one oh, one dead dude. I see. Like they could get the like one ship's down, get the other ship in the air, or get two ships mm -hmm. in the air or something. That's a good point. Because that it one really gets feels broke. like it feels like we one landed, like we lose track of them. I see. Right. Maybe that was the closest one, oh, yeah. and that was their main escape. But now they have to trudge out to the farther location to escape. I don't know. I'm filling in blanks here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote some comments here. What was I saying? We only follow one of the events, and the one is the time stretch. Oh yeah, I I imagined it as like they dropped into different parts of the planet. It turns out they dropped mm -hmm. in the same city. <laughs> well, like, yeah. I thought I thought they had like three dropships dropping into different parts of the of um the planet, and then it's like mm -hmm. this, and the the lieutenant and the sergeant on the same one. And as soon mm -hmm. as they're like the lieutenant and the sergeant aren't in in ice in eyesight, they're like whatever. I'm checking out. Like that one dropship mm -hmm. in the city that they're on their own. But uh, but I guess it's they went to different sections of the city. I think so. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah. Although it's very unclear how the operation went down. We see two land, I think. The third one is not shown landing. And it's like, it's like how close are they to that junkyard versus the farmland out there versus the actual downtown? It's, it's very unclear. So we don't know the urgency of different groups in the operation. I guess they should also always have a ship, like an orbit, that's ready to just drop. Ooh. I guess if you look at the uh, this ship, the, that's actually in space. I see, let's see here. If I circle them, I see one, two, three, four. No, that's not one. There are five. Four, there five. Are five right. ships. There are five ships. So if they dropped three, yeah. they have the command thing in orbit plus two in reserve. Yeah, mm. so that actually, that's that, great. that one crashing even though it sucks that that guy died. They have two in reserve. They could send an additional one down for rescue. Ah, uh, with the um, search and rescue squad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have two more on the surface plus two more in orbit. So really, the dude who died is more important than the this, this ship itself. It's true. This planet, I don't know, I see like reds. Yes. Is that... Are we thinking that's like ore or mineral deposits, like iron ore or something? Or are we thinking that's like algae blooms or some kind of life blooms? Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. I want to say it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because this, th this looks like a river valley right here. If I circle it, this right here. Yep. I looks agree. like a river valley. So that means precipitation happens fairly frequently. So that there's this flow and erosion. So life could find a way. God damn it. <laughs> also, back here also looks like a river valley. Yeah, it's like red on top. And then underneath is the kind of brown soil or brown stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is that so maybe the life is Maybe the life is red or this brownish. But that also looks like could be a mineral deposit. I was unclear. I don't know. Neat, you know. I don't know. Mm, yeah. Not important for the story, but I thought it was cool. Neat planet. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, I was unhappy with the lack of safety straps. Oh, my goodness. They're just like... a London bus? <laughs> they're like, oh, shit, handling it. As if, like, these accelerations in these re-entry vehicles couldn't splatter them against the wall. Wouldn't just rip their arm out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Okay. I went with the splatter. You went with the rip. It's graphic either way. Jesus. It was, it was in the in the in the actual reentry. It was turbulent. So Bobbin. if everything goes according to plan, you get mild turbulence. You're cool. But if something doesn't go according to plan, they're not strapped in. Because now you now you look a fool. Because you have your pants are full of stool. Because scary shit. Would you piss yourself, or would you shit yourself? Why not? If there's a reentry problem, you piss yourself because you're cold, because uh, you're scared, and you'd shit yourself. Fight or flight? Because fight or you're, flight, you're, fight. You're, you're not flying very soon. <laughs> Wait, why? If you get scared, do you like evacuate your waste? What is with that? I think it's something about like you need to get light and you need to get fast, so you like dump everything and. Uh, I think also animals are like I'm a hunt this, and then they see you shit and piss. You're like, oh, he's a stinky. I don't want to eat that. Uh, it could be like the skunk response. That could be, that could be, but I don't think it's about getting lighter. I mean, it's minimal. <laughs> you know, like how much does a full bladder weigh? No, I don't think it weighs that much. Yeah, I guess if you were to run away from a cheetah, would you want your ass full of shit? Because that's some extra shit you got to carry around. Maybe you want to be as light as possible to outrun the beast. I, I have no words other than I find that implausible. As long as that shit isn't impassable... Uh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Next what, pick. Uh, what do you want to say about this uh this uh bunny ear ship? I was actually gonna say anything about the bunny ear ship, although it does look like a bunny. bunny I was key. gonna say, what does this town do? These look I'm getting a very hydrocarbon y feel. These look like hydrocarbon storage tanks, like this and this, this, this. You know, these like these guys. They look like storage for oil. And I'm and there's all this piping and other shots. It looks like some kind of hydrocarbon refinery. So we've seen junkyard salvaging of ships. We've seen maybe hydrocarbon refining. We've seen merchants in town. We've seen repair of engines. We've got a port. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I, well, there was also salt evaporation ponds, maybe farming. This is a very well diversified economy. This is quite industrious. Yeah. So that was my only comment about that pick. I mean, it could be hydrocarbons. It could also just be red planet juice. Red planet juice. Still, it's some a... kind of storage and refining for some purpose, even if it's yeah. not oil. You know. Yeah. They're selling it for something, probably. They're selling the red juice. Why are you shitting on my idea? <laughs> it's, it's possible. I'm not, I'm not shitting on it. It's just, they could be know. hydrocarbons inside these mystery unlabeled tanks. Okay. Oh, definitely not. Hydrocarbons red sound red sophisticated. Hydrocarbons sound sophisticated. Red planet juice sounds not sophisticated. Therefore, yeah. I win. So it's not jargon. So that, okay, sure. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> it's a no, that's, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. It's not it, even fun. a competition. It's but fun. I win no, anyway. It's super fun. Fuck you. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Look how good this place is. He's there. Okay, first of all, I own one of these. It's a pressure washer with a concrete Wait. attachment. You can clean can the floor. Can, can you show me? Which, which, what are you like talking to? No, I mean, uh, can you circle it? Oh. <laughs> Hey, look at this guy. This guy, look at this. He's, he's, I, first of all, I own one of these. This is a pressure washer with a concrete attachment. You use it to like clean like floor surfaces from all the rain and gunk and junk on there. Mm -hmm. And look at this society. Like he's taking care of this dirt road and making sure it's nice and clean. Like mm -hmm. mm, maintenance is important. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And he doesn't, he could just be lazy and not do it, but he decided yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at, look at these two little. Jerk bags here, just chit chatting, not doing work. Mm -hmm. This guy working hard, working hard. Yes, I want this guy those in my two society. Guys, those two, those two little guys could be workers for something else. Because what is this? Um, 
Yeah, they're they're chit chat workers. They they make people feel like, <laughs> oh, that might what be a hydrocarbon tank? container. It might also have red juice inside it. That's. I think red the red juice, juice is, the, is, is in is in guy. this large storage. That's a good thing point. up here. Yeah, yeah. This looks like maybe some cleaning fluid, or some maintenance fluid. Oh, it's the thing that fills this thing up. Okay, okay. Oh, really? Oh, really? Sure. Oh, I see. I see the line yep. down here. All these little trip hazards. So he needs to put up uh, like a sign here. Cuidado signs here and here. Cuidado. To make yeah. sure people... Yeah. But other than that, he's doing his job well. What the hell is this picture now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, next pick. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, so this is Cassian, and he's a kid, and he's stuck in the ship <laughs> that he entered. Mm -hmm. And so then, what's her name? May or Marv? Marv? She, like, rolls in, and she's like, oh, my gosh, a child. And, like, like at this point, wait a minute. She's here doing criminal stuff. Like, you got a couple choices. Like, you either kidnap the kid or you kill the kid. He has seen your faces. Those are your two options. And this guy gets it. He's like, what the fuck? Like, let's get the fuck out of there. Like... What are you? What are your possible options? It's to kidnap or kill him. Were Were they doing illegal stuff? They were in there like doing illegal salvage. They had to get out of there before the Imperials came. And okay, so I guess illegal salvage is illegal, but illegal would salvage. The, would the Imperials care enough to track down some kid as a witness to find some illegal salvagers? They just write it off. Depends on the guy, because like our main villain dude, he's willing to chase you down forever. Like, but his supervisor was like, eh, don't worry about it. Like, they're drunk, they fell down, done. So, if a ship, for we don't, we actually don't know why that ship crashed on. What's the Castian's planet name? Canari. Remember, Canari. So that ship crashes on Canari. It's pretty much a write off at that point. These guys go in and illegally salvage. Which, by the way, amazing somehow they got there finder keepers yeah finders keepers on that one um now the empire is like we need to make sure there's no illegal salvage of this destroyed ship so they, they're going to track down a kid i mean wow it's dedication. I mean, maybe i mean maybe. that's why that's why that little box is worth forty thousand credits is because it's like a controlled material that oh, the, see, yeah. the imperial doesn't want out i guess yeah if like a modern ship of the u.s navy crashed somewhere it's like and the local enigma. People started like swarming it to grab stuff. We would try to stop them. Try to stop it and track down stuff because it's important. Okay, okay, I buy, I buy. Power power cells can be turned into rebel weapons, and like the decoder mm -hmm. boxes, like the enigma, and you can decode the imperial stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in encryption. That is the encryptor, like the the box that the box that. Cassian is trying to sell the fixer dude. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can track all the ships from in this huge range area. Like that is the decoder. I see. So it, I see. Yeah. So like now that this kid has seen your face and you're doing criminal stuff and the Imperials might be after you, you got two options. You either got to kidnap the kid or you got to kill him. Which it going to be? I believe you're, you're going to you're gonna bring him into your home to your basement or you're going to give him the bullet. You're going to strangle him or take him on a space adventure. You're going to give him a new Didn't. home or you're going to be hostile to him? You're going to rehome him or retire this kid? Didn't they say that the they said the Imperials would just kill all the children who were there? Yeah. And so she was rescuing him from them? Didn't seem like they were worried about him being a witness. Which is, right? is an oversight. They've <laughs> they've they've taken their know. human sympathies and tear for this child they don't know. I guess that's mm -hmm. right. Save him. You know what? There's going to be like a lot of like childhood obesity in like in the U.S. So like I better just go into people's homes and like save them because like, you know, the calories are coming for them. Wait, what? Oh, I'm using any situation where somebody might die and twisting it into I'm saving them. I see. So this you're saying this woman is a bad person. I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, this woman is a good person because she's saving him from his life yeah and his uh his child f friends that mm -hmm. live they just he disappeared one day mm -hmm. i wonder if there's like a legend of cassian to them like this kid just disappeared one day 
I mean, I would just assume he died somewhere, fell off a cliff. Oh. Was eaten. Was eaten by the local intoxified wildlife. Or by a lady that's from space. Cathian and Luthen meet in this like abandoned Victorian chain and heavy stuff warehouse. But like, look how heavy this door sounds and looks. But and also look, look how he just moves it like like it's nothing. He's so strong. He's so strong. He didn't have to lean into that at all. He stood straight up and just deltoided that. Mm. He's just got rear delts for days. He just. I'm a space man. Maybe he's force sensitive and he just, he like, he used force, the force to open it. He used There's no way like a 60 year old man rear dealt is going to do that. Apparently all those years of microgravity, all you got to do is work out rear delts. Rear delts. Rear delts make you look thick. Thick. That's true. Because you rear delts are very important. Yeah. Also for injury purposes, very important. So he's, as an old man, he's really taking, uh, you know, rotor, rotator cuff injuries seriously. Yeah, you want to keep using your wings forever? Rotator cuffs. Your wings? Your wing, I don't know why I call them wings. Your arms. Arms. I'm not a biologist. Is he, is he <laughs> wait, he's, he's not flight capable, right? He's a person. Uh, wait to the end of the episode. He does leave the planet. Must be able to fly. True, true. Absolutely true. Gotcha. So I want what I want to say about this right here. So Cassian and his name is Luthen, meet, Luthen. Uh, and it's this weird Victorian-looking factory. Was this planet technologically not advanced in the Star Wars universe for a while? Because this looks like Victorian. There's like brick and steel and chains. I see what you're saying. So like in so like, whenever this planet was colonized, they didn't port over like human technology that's like no rediscover yourself rediscover it make your own victorian chains and heavy shit like you don't get our new modern technology yeah weird right so they don't, they don't get the modern technology so they go through the technological progression which means they are currently past victorian but not quite at you know republic or M- imperial level yet interesting i don't know weird. like i can understand if they don't share materials because if materials, you know, kind of move it, cost money, but technology, you just send the blueprints. Right. And buy those parts from the entire galaxy of suppliers. Mm-hmm. Weird. Oh, yeah. So this one is somehow they like shot a single chain in the in this factory floor that's now abandoned. And one thing fell. But that sort of set off this chain reaction of things. Fall. Why? A literal chain reaction. Yeah, where, where the chain one chain would cause a cascade of chain failures is that what they were saying it's, it's so weird it's all the chains were loaded up to maximum chain capacity and so a single failure just cascades and breaks everything else but they're not in the, they're not even independent chains it's like one chain all linked and so when one failed they all failed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's it that's the explanation really there's no controversy here moving on he, he, even when they were shutting down this factory, they're like, should we take these down? Like, we can't. <laughs> Moving a single one would take everything down. Take everything down. <laughs> Just abandon can it. I, <laughs> can I move this piece of equipment? No, you can't move no. it because that would affect yeah. all the other hanging <laughs> Wait, Does it look broke? <laughs> no. Don't fix it. Don't fix it. <laughs> Leave it. In fact, it got so bad, they just abandoned the factory altogether. So Luthen drops this bomb on Cassian where he's just like I know your father and 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 I know it's all about you and Cassian correctly is like what the fuck like how do you know any of this to me so he puts a gun to Luthen's head and instead of Luthen just telling him the answer he like dances around it he dances around it and dances around it until Cassian gets like closer and closer and is like touching his head still doesn't tell him is Luthen suicidal Maybe, maybe he's uh, trying to get Cassian to help him. No, but then if he did, he, he would just go up to the corporation and let them kill them. Yeah. I think he just got a flair for the dramatic. <laughs> it's just, why it's would you do Two this? people just in a room. <laughs> yeah, but but always act for the audience. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Even by himself in the room, in the mirror, he... 
protects. He holds information back from himself so he can later reveal it to himself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. He reveals to himself in the mirror. No, no. no. Mm. Not really. That's not real. Nobody lies to himself. Just, oh, that's, so, oh, that's so real. So real. That's not even funny. Okay, so shit's going down in this town and this kid is just like sitting there being sad because he's wearing green. But like, I get it. Like nobody else is wearing green. You stand out a lot. But like, but then his dad comes running in wearing like a very similar green jacket, similar green, like similar haircut. Like, yo, this is, this is, if I, if I was a dad, I would totally dress up my kid just like me. Like this is, yeah, this is sweet and wholesome. I love it. Yeah, it makes sense. Because, and since nobody else wears green and they're total outcasts and losers, but they can check each other out of a crowd. Okay. I guess that isn't that, I guess that is what the coat of arms was historically. Like you dressed up all the same to show that you are the same group. That's right. So you can be like, those guys, you know, they're nobility. Those guys, losers. Nobility, losers. losers. And these guys, in fact, everybody in this town is a loser. Oh. On the galactic scale, but on the local scale, like, hey, yeah, pretty good. Killing it. Nice community. Everyone cares about each other. Yeah. Everyone cares about each other so much that they have this, like, built-in alarm system. This, like, mm-hmm. socially constructed, like, this is how we tell people. And I love this. This is, like, this is like meerkats. Everyone watching out for each other. Like, some shit goes down. Ring the alarm. But, like, this is literally an open tube, and then they're muffling one side. Like, let that thing ring. Hold it by the chain. True. Maybe he wants to direct sound out the right side of the tube and not out the left. I don't know why he would want to do that. Just hold it by the chain. Just hold it by the chain. Also, have fun with this. Like, this would be so much fun. Like, like, oh my gosh, something's going down in town. Like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to bust out some complex, some, some, some spicy rhythms. Get everyone out in the street doing the cha-cha. Like, have fun with it. Like, yeah, shit's going down, but like, we can have a great time. Like, this guy. Wait. This guy, this guy, he gets it. He's like having a blast going to town on this square that is supposed to be a triangle. And like, dude in the thriller jacket, he gets it. Like, you see this. This guy's musical. And he's smiling, having a great time. So while you're setting off the alarm system to send out your town's killers to go kill a bunch of people who are invading your town, make sure you're dancing and having fun. Yeah, because then they don't know who it is. That's right. Like, like well, these people are all fucking crazy. They're just dancing in the streets. Yeah, but yeah. one of them's got a knife. Yeah, so it's not drunk. And the guy behind him has got a clock. It's you're dancing and having fun, and then and then you're dancing and having fun. Yeah, blending in the crowd. That's right. Just dancing. What's just up? Dancing. Brr. Brr. <laughs> what Why are you laughing already? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. Bix is running. She's running towards us and everyone else. Everyone else is running away. This this is alarm bells for me. This, this When the crowd is running one direction, you should run with them because there's some scary shit on the other side. I learned this at a very young age. You always run with the wildebeest. Agreed. Fucked. Especially if you're a lion because the wildebeest are running away from a lion. So you should run away from your friends. <laughs> what was there a lesson in in lion king that i didn't know no it's, i don't know. stay away from friends i guess yeah simba simba runs away he goes to live in the forest with a with a meerkat and a warthog right that's right and they become friends okay this guy i forgot his name but like who cares he's like bix's he's, boyfriend the character's not born bix's boyfriend sure whatever this guy who thinks he's romeo like so romantic he's like my lady my lady who who hurt her and it's like this guy with the anti you cannon did and then and then he's running down the stairs like i'll save you like no pew 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 you go down and then here he is like yo dude you've already lost the girl no amount of parkour is gonna get her attention like just just let it go oh you want more and then the next picture is him letting go yep of this existence boom i see i didn't actually understand why this guy had to die he okay. First off, he betrayed Bix by selling out Andor to these corporate goons. Fine. Yeah. But then he was like, "I'm going to rescue you, Bix, by running at armed corporate guys and then getting shot." There was mm-hmm. was it a grand romantic gesture or was it just suicide? So romantic, so romantic. Just so romantic. run into gunfire and 
you'll win her back. Yeah. Yeah. I know I know you're joking, but towards the end, at like the very end of the show, she does like reach for him. So like Oh no, I want yeah, I want to talk about that because it's like pretty sad actually. All right, it dawns on it. it dawns on her that like the last thing she said to this guy was that he's a terrible person and now he's dead. Yeah. So it's sad, you know. Maybe she they never would have been together oh. but she, she had feelings for him and stuff and then she like reaches for him and then they have to go and it's just a sad situation i i interpreted it very differently i realized i thought it was like she's like oh no my fuck buddy oh no oh, no. right i mean she didn't really like him she just they're just fucking around right no no i think they actually they liked each other really maybe, maybe they she was like worked out i thought she was like stuff. only once a week like she didn't want she didn't want any more than that i mean they're still still catching feels right a little bit at least sure now he's dead never to bone again this is like even though we're rooting for cassian and the rebellion people are catching there's collateral damage people are catching fire who are you know on the periphery of the rebellion it's it's fairly dark and sad but kind of realistic He should have zigged and zagged. He would have been fine. Instead, he died. He died. <laughs> but look how comfy he is. Like, like, give up. Just take a break. Lay down. But he's like soft and warm still. A few moments later. Ho ho! This would totally happen, right? Like little kitty is like, hmm, you're soft and warm. Hmm, stretch out. Hmm. Wouldn't it, the cat would not notice he's dead because he'd care. be a nice warm surface. And then when he actually died, the cat would eat him. Oh, it's true. It's yeah. so true. They don't wait very long. Before. So these two people, their names are Marva Andor and Clem Andor. And they're rescuing Cassian from what's the planet name again? Canari. Kinari. So they're rescuing him or kidnapping him, depending on your perspective. <laughs> um, first off, they rescue him and they say the Republic will kill all of the children. Is that true or are they just making that up to justify themselves? Mm -hmm. Only one way to find out. Where are the other kids from this planet? Well, I mean, that one guy in the previous episode, he like woke up from his toxic stupor. <laughs> And just started children. unloading on like, he's like, children. <laughs> like what? Where are your birth certificates? Unregistered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just a no decision no at all. It was just yeah. like instinct for this guy. So maybe he's right. Maybe, maybe these, the, the Andor couple know that the Republic will kill all of them. Wouldn't it By be wild way, if this was like a known force sensitive planet? And so like all these kids mm -hmm. were like on the radar so to speak of like the imperial so actually that's a good question the is this they call it the republic in the show but we're in that i think we're in that transition period between the republic and the the empire yeah so people on the periphery may still call it the republic but it represents evil i mean there was a the smooth empire. transition from the republic right into the empire that's right so the name may stick in many places even though they have declared themselves the empire so that's an interesting touch. Mm. Also, and, uh, nice touch. The robot's clean. Robot's clean. Clean and shiny. Good thing there's, there's this a nice anchor. trail. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Imagine this with like the slightest bit of rocks. And he's like, um, never. I guess yeah. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Come pick me up. Please. Although R2-D2 did have those little jets. He'd be like. That's right. Maybe he has them too. Maybe he has them too. Still. Must be limited fuel. Also, are they unaffected by the toxicity? Oh yeah, we decided we the crew of the crash ship may have been intoxicated by some leak on the ship, not necessarily right. the planet itself. Right. Even though the planet is toxic. Toxic somehow. We don't know how it's toxic. Well, we don't know. I mean, there are leaks. different types of toxicity. It could be something like mm -hmm. don't drink the water. Mm-hmm. But the saying. crew turned yellow pretty quickly. 
which is what, and these people have not, which means not. with Clement, Clement Maven have not. So we're assuming that, that something happened in space. Yeah. Has to to Otherwise down. these guys would be affected. Right. Yeah. They could have gotten something like space chlamydia from some aliens or whatever. And so it spread around the ship with the idea of some type of, okay. 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 I see what okay, your, your okay. expression. It's a viral. <laughs> it's an agent of a vector. No, it's a vector. Like a vector a virus is a virus. Or a vector. Yeah. Okay. So a virus a is a type of vector. Yeah. Vector chlamydia space. And, and so then they're all like, ah, oh, my skin is yellow. Uh, I can't focus on my job duties and, and tasks. And then they're like, ah, oh, the ship is going down. Uh, just like, just like us when, when we got this, this disease, this vector. And then, and then they crashed. So these people don't have it. Uh, Clem and Marv, 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 Mavry. And uh, yeah. Cool. So not impossible. That, that entire scenario, not impossible. Therefore it happened. <laughs> Therefore it happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is another example of um, collateral damage. So Cassina's part of the rebellion. Everybody's part of the rebellion. And... Her name is Marva. Mar- Marva had this nice place Marva. to live in this town, and she was just growing old and just living living well. But her place is now trashed because the corporate goons in came in and trashed the place. So more collateral damage, kind of sad. She could have stopped it at any moment. All she had to do was tell them where Cassian was. Mm-hmm. All she had to do was be a rat, and she didn't. Good for her. Ratata. And... Yeah, next. It, this is the scene where um, she reaches for her now ex-boyfriend. Dead body. Uh, and it's just a sad situation. You know, he's dead. There's no turning back now. I sad. think if I recall, the next thing she does is turn back and leave the situation. Uh, that's true. Oh, you mean turn back as in make him not dead. Right, make him not dead. Yeah, yeah, that's you know. true. Say something nice before they break up, which was probably going to happen anyway. But now they're, this is it, life. She's a free bird. Get on. And the, nec- the next picture is this is the guy that sabotaged the um, the drop. I don't know, the landing craft by attaching a rope to or a cable to it with a weight, and killed that one kid. So this is we interpreted this as like him thinking, him and like thinking through. He just killed a kid. And but he had to do it because they had invaded his town, and he's looking out for his friend Cassian. But brutal. I mean, he did it in a way that, that it's never going to get traced back to him. So well done. Like that well, cable's wrecked. No fingerprints around. Still got to live with it though. On the bright side, there's some cool physics in the video. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Actually, yes, yeah, let's watch it on your screen. So he attaches it, and there's this heavy weight, boom. Yeah. So now he's got this heavy, swingy business. Yeah, pendulating underneath him. Oh, oh, we, yeah. oh yeah. I mean... Brutal. I think he was okay up until he got hooked on the, on the armature. Because, like, pilots, like, helicopter pilots fly with cargo. But mm-hmm. not with cargo that's caught on something. Like, mm-hmm. I think it could have been okay. But also, if you're if you're a helicopter pilot and you take off thinking there's nothing attached, but then something is attached, it might be very difficult to recover if your maneuvers Ooh. are, you know. Yeah, I've heard there's right. like, like one right. of the rules is if shit's going bad, like dump the cargo, save the, save yourself and the and the helicopter. Maybe if these um these big towers were around there that and he got stacked, maybe he would have been able to recover. Possible. I buy. Yeah. But then oof in this like in this death spin here. Oh, it gets caught. Yep. It gets your caught. Bones, your bone and there's no, oh, just, there's no oh, time. Just like you have that couple seconds of like watching the surface of get this machine you. get closer and closer and you're like there's nothing this is I can the do. end. There's Brutal. Nothing I can do. I feel bad for him. He's yeah. He's the character I identified with. He was just kind of like a kid doing his job. Yeah. I don't know if he had any like political investment in the whole imperial rebellion thing. And now he's dead. It's sad. Just trying to get ahead. Working for a company. 
Yeah, actually. Okay. Next picture. Wait, right, let's watch their oh, escape. The red juice. Oh, okay. Oh, God, God damn it. <laughs> let's watch their escape. Okay. Uh, here it is. So one thing that I want to say before we watch this is <laughs> they do this diversion. <laughs> yeah. Right? They, they yeah. send this like speeder or this slow speeder down the, the main drag of the with town bombs up inside it with bombs it explodes it's just huge like pop, pop. it catches the guards attention and like blows up and they some of the guys are killed that's their distraction so they should have gone the opposite direction of the distraction but instead they pop out right next to the distraction like right next to them and yeah. the corporate guys are like oh it's right there I, now i know where you are and i'm not distracted what was the point of this the distraction was, the was just to make them feel bad because <laughs> it yeah. like it didn't enhance their ability to get away like the guys are still right there like you just made the corporate dudes feel bad yep there it is down the main drag with the explosives cool 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 yeah why these guys stood in front of it like this i have no idea and then it blows up you could have you would have been fine there they would have thought that like oh maybe these guys are dead okay well we'll go check in on them like that would have been fine walk out the back right now Actually, did anybody get hurt? I don't no. think anybody got hurt in the crash here. Not in the crash, no. no. Not in the crash, so they're walking up to it. Creeping up. Crouch walking. No. And they're, they're no, right they there. <laughs> they're right there. They, they could be taking shots right now. Yeah. So that sucks. Those guys got hurt. That sucks. Maybe even killed. But they still know where they are. The distraction didn't work. They didn't even use like, the actual ex the sound of explosion to cover up their speeder. Like they left right before it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Oh, well, I mean, they improvised the whole distraction thing. Didn't work out the way they That's thought, That's but true. they got away. So Sure. Yeah. And during the getaway, there's these salt ponds that they go over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is another indicator that this economy of this town is quite diverse. They have, you know, they have maybe hydrocarbon or red juice refineries. They have salvaging. They have, you know... Uh, merchants in town and now they have salt evaporation ponds or red juice evaporation ponds that they're going to sell this whatever they're getting here it's a pretty diverse economy can i just say that here on earth we have red juice that turns into pink sea salt so maybe red juice is not so ridiculous red juice. maybe red juice is just the red it's just you're on reddish. board with red juice now <laughs> I'm still not on board. I still don't like it, but I'll go with you're, it. You're saying it like it's like a normal thing. Yeah. Red juice. Well, on this planet, it's called red juice. That's right. You know, the, I just want to say, if this gives me... So we noticed the Millennium Falcon sections. Yeah, like it looks, if, a little bit. Actually, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It also gave me some Imperial vibes, right? Did you get that from this? I see it. I see it. Yeah, it could be. I so mean, like, the people, the guy that makes the ships is working for both sides. That's true. And they're probably interchangeable parts. So like yeah. this section right there. That, that's Falcon. Okay, that's actually not a good circle. This section right here. That's that looks Falcony like as heck. Falcony as, as heck. But then these sections like here and here have an Imperial vibe to them, to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. some of these devices here, they look Imperially as well. Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right on the edge. Both. Because it has like that two pointy parts in the front, just like the Falcon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then it also looks like a Imperial dude just looking right at me, like the eyes mm -hmm. and the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is, oh yeah. So this is after Castian has been savagely kidnapped by, Rescue, what are their names? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are their names again? Marv and Clem. Marv and Clem. And actually, this is the ship that he was staying in in the junkyard in the first two episodes. So it actually was his ship or his mother and father's ship. They took staying. him from his home and now this is his home. That's right. In a oh, did they mean Clem is his father? No, Clem's still alive. Is what Clem did Luthen mean? I thought so. I thought he was uh, I don't remember. there outside of Maeve's home. Mars. Mars home. Was he there? I don't remember. Either way, this is uh he's being rescued or savagely rescued, kidnapped, rescued, 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 
And this is how we got off, uh, what's the Canari? This is how we got, got off Canari and became a member of the Rebellion, I guess. I mean, is he a member of the Rebellion prior to Luthen bringing him in? Like, I think he's not oh, um, he's... a part of the Rebellion yet. So what was he doing in the previous couple episodes? I think he's just living life, just trying to just sell shit and oh. live his life there. Like, he was just like, yeah, trying to sell. Uh, sorry, he was trying to sell stuff, make money, maybe on the yeah. black market. Yeah. But now when Luthen takes him in, he's actually going to join the rebellion. So he's actually not in the rebellion yet. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. Interpreted. Um, this is the guy that dies. This is the guy that dies. Just a guy. That's sad. Um, trying yeah. trying real hard to fly this. Just mm -hmm. trying to. Trying real hard. I'm failing. Be a normal dude. Oof. 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 Oh, you're going to see it. It's uh, going to happen. Yeah. This guy killed him. Yeah, this guy killed him. I wonder if you ever got to see his face. So he knows what it looks yeah, like. I don't think he knows who he killed. I think he just knew he was going to kill somebody. Good thing that corporation dude was evil. Conscious. Yeah. Absolved. Yeah. Nobody joins a corporation or anything in over their head and may don't not may not know what's going on. Never happens. They're part of an evil evil organization. They're evil. Yeah. It's my logic. And that's it. Actually, there's a lot going on in this episode and in this series so far. I don't quite know how to put it all together, but we're getting there. We'll so I don't really know what's going on in this uh, show yet. I mean, we're not sure. Cassian, is he a rebel? I don't think he's a rebel yet. A lot of stuff to put together. It's kind of dark. I like it. I like it. I'm excited for episode four. Yeah, me too.